Hello and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Chris. I will simply break you. <laughs> We've got Vince. The baby's cool. <laughs> baby is cool. I'm Kia. Hi, welcome to the show. Um, we are. We got a. We got a quote from each of the things that we're reading today. Uh, we today are reading Cosmic Ghost Rider, which is a pretty recent comic from 2018 uh, by Donny Cates, art by Dylan Burnett, where the Punisher has become the Ghost Rider, but also the Herald of Galactus, and is taking care of baby version of Thanos. We'll get to all that. Uh, and then we are continuing slash we'll talk about it later. We're continuing our long read of Batman Nightfall, the broken bat. Um, this is the famous issue number 497 where can we just spoil it? Where Batman gets his back broken by Bane. Yep. Uh, we had kind of thought we might end the long read here. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the end though. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on some Cosmic Ghost Rider. Um, and th- I guess I didn't know that this was a little bit more of a long-running character who had some yeah. some history before this miniseries. So so the reading I, – I, I guess I messed up. But the, the reading guide <laughs> in, in Marvel starts with this art called Thanos Lives. There was a Thanos series ongoing that Jeff Lemire wrote, and then he stopped re- writing it. And then Donny Cates took it over for the last six issues, and mm. it was – about a younger Thanos meeting his older, oldest version of himself who had like conquered, conquered all of the universe. Um, but in it, the, one of Thanos's assistants was this cosmic ghost writer. And it took about three or four issues for them to reveal who it was. Cause this is in the far, far future. And mm. they revealed that uh, in, I guess earth's future or a multiverse universe of it, um, that everybody got killed. Um, everybody on earth got killed and, Punisher was like, I'm going to punish this bastard for killing everybody on Earth. And then Mephisto's like, hell yeah, I'll, I'll give you the spirit of vengeance powers, the Ghost Rider powers, which I'm surprised if I don't know if they ever did like in the 90s that, that the Punisher didn't get the Ghost Rider powers because <laughs> it really seems like a supernatural upgrade to just give him the spirit of vengeance to enact his punishing a little more. But, you know, go- going into this kind of a little bit blind, I am OK with jumping right into the middle of the story, though, because I feel it gave us enough recap. And the trade that I was uh, reading had this little kind of um, quick recap of everything that had happened so far with him. Um, really, all his life, it says Frank Castle was a decorated Marine, an upstanding citizen when his family was killed in a mob hit. From that day, he was a force of retrib- retribution until he died, which I don't think I realized Punisher died at some point. And then he returned as the spirit of vengeance. So that's it took him dying. That, there's one yes. issue that shows like his back history in that Thanos book. And that's that's probably when he died, as it were. Yep. And, but he was stuck on Earth and there was no one to punish because Thanos had killed everybody on Earth. Mm-hmm. And then and then Galactus showed up wanting to destroy Earth. Um, and <laughs> there was no one to kill. So then he gave uh, Ghost Rider slash Punisher uh, – Herald of Galactus powers, and then they went off on search to go kill uh, Thanos. And yes. then, and then it says he became the Black Right Hand of Thanos, yes. and then he died for real. Yes. Uh, so that's where our story picks up. Punisher has just done all that stuff, and then he died for real. Yeah, Silver uh, Surfer, uh, after training with for twenty years to become worthy, got them Mjolnir and killed Punisher slash Ghost Rider. That what happened? Yeah. Wow. So uh, Silver cool. Surfer ba- barely comes up in this for a story about the Herald of Galactus, but I guess uh, I guess he doesn't matter. Thanos Lives, a pretty fun book, actually. Oh. Um, it's uh, by Donny Cates. It's uh, in the reading guide. You'll see it on Marvel Unlimited. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, all right, well, let's jump into this uh, story here. Um, we get, uh, I should also say the art style is kind of instantly, it stands out very much so. It's, how, do you, how would you describe this art? It's, it's more cartoony. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it like, I don't know, in a way that still has a lot of nice violence. It's not like it's not like I hate Fairyland cartoony. Like there's still some edge to it, you know, um, it's, it's a little like that Ghost Rider that we read with Robbie Reyes when there was the other another Ghost Rider relaunch mm-hmm. that we read for the show. Goodness knows when um, oh, like it was very, ages ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little like a little cartoony. But I mean, Ghost Rider's always kind of been like a little dirty and a little scratchy and a little like um, mm-hmm. not not perfectly drawn. Yes. So. The flaming skulls in particular always look nice to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, jumping into the story here, he is in Valhalla. Now he's died and somehow ended up there. Uh, he is fighting Koldax, the grave in some bar. Uh, and then Odin comes up to him afterwards and 
you know, he's just like, hey, man, you're 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 basically in the afterlife. You're in paradise. Why why are you still killing so much? Um, and you know, they they talk about uh, destiny and all that for a bit. And uh, Ghost Rider slash Frank is just saying, yeah, this is just my thing. Vengeance. I guess I still have unfinished business. Uh, he's a little more jokey, also. This, yeah, this is yeah. this is uh, a little. He says his brain don't work, but I mean, Punisher's you know thousands, if not millions, of years old at this point. He's not quiet and he's not like like one linery anymore he's like this weird he's almost not peter parkery but he's more in that vibe than not than the yeah. usual punisher this, it, this is like almost old man deadpool yeah that's not that's not far off yeah i, I wouldn't say he's quite that jokey but but no. there is elements of that i i definitely got old man wolverine vibes honestly throughout a lot of this just for i don't know something about that gave me gave me some of that feeling you could it is like it is spider man I guess, when he, you know, is calling people dude and saying, like, we're pals, right? And they're, like, allies. Like, they're yeah, not yeah. willing to say that they're, you know, friends. Uh, but, yeah, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so then Odin's like, yeah, I didn't really think I'd be able to control you. And he has repaired his bike for him. He's put some sort of, uh, you know, uh, Odin Valhalla energy in there to, to make it go. Instead of a wheel, it's got, like... Yeah, you know those balls at Sharper Image, you touch them and like the electricity. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's got it's one of those as, things. Yeah, but it's Asgardian or whatever, yeah. Asgardian, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, Asgard. Um, and then uh, Frank's like, okay, what am I going to do with this? I know, I got to go after Thanos. He's the one I've just been dealing with this whole time. Uh, and he decides he is going to go back in time to where Thanos was born on Titan. And he's going to kill him as a baby. And Why has like, no one okay, ever thought of this? It's I'm like on board with this story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It seems it seems like a good idea. And he shows up and he goes to shoot his gun uh, at the baby. And the baby jumps out of the crib and attacks him and starts beating him. But then he looks so cute. And Ghost Rider, well, no, hold on. Ghost Rider tries to use his penance stare, which is a power of like making people feel all the regret that they've had in the world. Uh, and the baby... It has no effect on the baby because the baby has no regret yet. He just, uh, you know, he's just a baby, right? I do like the line he says when he's getting attacked by baby Thanos. He's like, damn it, how are you already like this? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, He's already a very feisty baby. At one point, the Ghost Rider does have to, like, punch him in the jaw, uh, knocks him out. And he's like, all right, well, what am I going to do with this thing? I can't kill him. Uh, I can't let him stay here. And he realizes he's just going to take him with him. And he straps a chain to his chest and puts uh, baby Thanos in it. Like, uh, what do you call those things? Baby Bjorn. That's what it is. And uh, they go riding off together. And that's issue one there. Uh, Very, very quick issue one. Breeze right by. Uh, Jumping straight into issue two. There's a cool shark shark on the cover. Very interested in this cool shark. It's a space shark with armor. It's (laughs) <laughs> yes, and they're, yes. And they're and they're and they're zooming away from it on the on the motorcycle. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it's gonna be good. Uh, so Frank is not sure what the next part of this plan is. He has uh, baby Thanos with him, so he goes to uh, gets get drunk on some bar on Titan while he figures it out. Do you have the best uh, happy hour in the universe? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Not Titan, some planet that he knows. Oh, is sorry. Doomed. I see. I see. That's right. That's right. And he's he's constantly talking about like, yeah, all these people are dead in ten minutes, anyways. I'm just gonna, yeah, whatever. Uh, and he gets baby Thanos a drink, too, and he is trying to <sighs> trying to tell baby Thanos about how he's going to be a murderer, and he's trying to change that. And Thanos just wants to learn more about the murderer, and he's like, no, 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 don't, don't latch on to that. That is very um, much like, like when I tell my son, like, things he's going to grow up, and you're like, you're supposed to be, like, like concerned or thinking about this stuff. It's like, hell yeah, I'm absolutely going to move out. And you're like, no, 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 <laughs> focusing on the wrong things. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and, but the bartender does not, is like, what, you're letting that baby drink here? And that's where your line came from. Nah, the baby's cool. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, and the owner doesn't want to let Thanos drink. And then at one point the baby just jumps out at them with a broken bottle, uh, to attack them. Ghost Rider has to yank him back with a little chain leash. It's like a chain chomp. Uh, and Ghost Rider, uh, Ghost Rider says you can't murder those people besides they're all going to die anyway. And Thanos was like, well, what's the difference? Uh, it's like, well, it's, it's different. Just letting people, you no, know, we're not going to let you murder people. Uh, and just drop it, man. Drop it. Uh, but the reason they're all going to die in 10 minutes anyways is because Galactus is there hanging out. Shit. 
Um, and Frank tells them all, don't worry, I'll go talk to him for you. And on the way up, Thanos is like, how are you going to stop him? He's like, I'm not, I'm not going to stop him. Uh, I just think it's fun to give them hope before they die. And Thanos thinks that's very cute and he enjoys it. I don't know if that was a joke. Like the, it, 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 he thinks it's fun or that's like a nice thing he does. I can't tell really with, with Ghost Rider plus, plus Punisher. I can't tell with Ghost Rider either, but Thanos definitely think it's fun. Yeah. He, he, he enjoys that. Um, so Frank slash Ghost Rider flies up to Galactus to talk to him. And at first, Galactus doesn't pay him any mind. But this was all sort of in Ghost Rider's in the far past now. So Galactus technically doesn't remember meeting Frank Castle Ghost Rider. Uh, but he says, hey, didn't you tell me this fun story about eating this planet? What was it? There was some weird detail you brought up. Oh, yeah, the sharks, because sharks fly in from everywhere, and there's a lot of them. I thought there was going to be one space shark from this cover. No, yeah, it looked like, like it was going to be like a chase scene from space sharks, but the no. space sharks die like in the next panel. Yeah, yeah it's not a... They don't really do anything. It's not a very... Uh, there's like, how many sharks are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sharks, it appears. Um, One's a space with... catfish. Oh, it is, isn't it? Or maybe two. Uh, and they have they have different types of armor. There's definitely some different animals in there, though. This big gr- a greenish one with the red um, the red fins in yeah, the middle. Yeah, that's my thing. catfish boy. Okay, I think there's three catfish and five sharks. That's yeah. what I'm gonna say. Glad we glad we settled that. Yeah, it, it's uh, a little like the Aquaman movie with the. Sh- I'm a sucker for sharks with armor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you put them on there, and then you put them in space. Hell yeah, I'm here, 100. percent Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sounds like fun. I'd hang out up there. Um, but Galactus is still kind of not buying any of Frank's story. And Frank says, oh, and then he tries to blast Frank and it doesn't kill him. He's like, why didn't the power cosmic work on you? And Frank says, all right, Thanos, just read my mind. I know you got that power. Galactus is like, okay, okay. And they do it. And he's like, oh, damn, we're friends. We hunted Thanos together. And then you join Thanos. And Frank kind of recaps, I think, some of the last series where he talks about how he was planning to infiltrate Galacti- or Thanos' kind of crew and slit his throat in his sleep. And he covers baby Thanos' ears while he says that. <laughs> uh, but he kind of fell too far into it and essentially got brainwashed and really couldn't be anything else. Well, I, and uh, also in the book, I think what happened is Thanos was like, I can show you all some real motherfuckers that need to be punished. And the spirit mm-hmm. of vengeance part was like, oh, okay, I got to do that too, I guess. So he got a little <laughs> distracted. Uh. Um, and Galactus is like, okay, well, so you brought me baby Thanos so that I could kill him, right? Let's do it. And Frank's like, no, 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 no. I got a rehab plan. And then the Watcher shows up. Although first Thanos like points and says Sky Baby. And the, it's the Watcher. Watcher, uh, two for two in, in our episodes now. Well, no, no, he wasn't <laughs> was in Batman. He wasn't in Batman, I guess, last week. But two episodes ago, yeah. Secret Invasion. Yes, was yes, yes. Oh, that's right. He was there. You know, Watcher says he's here to witness the worst choice that anyone has ever made. Uh, and then, like a panel later, he says, "I'm sworn to never interfere." Like just by just by saying that, you're interfering. Yeah, you it's a real Heisenberg and uh, principle, right? <laughs> just by observing, you've already contaminated. Every damn time, yeah. Watcher. Every damn time. Yeah. I do love his line though. He goes, "Francis, by making this choice, you've just created a timeline." where Punisher raised Thanos as a child. You realize that, right, man? Like, that's such a good... Like, like okay, yeah. It's probably yep. not the best idea. Um, and then instantly afterwards, we get a glimpse of this future that has now been created, this new timeline, where Cable has shown up uh, back in the past now. He is the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and he appears to have... Uh, I wrote the wrong ones down because I was making assumptions here, but on the next, in the, at the beginning of the next page, the next panel, the next issue, thank you, issue three. Let's just jump straight into it because we meet the, the group here. Well, the, the, We've it's, got... funny, it's funny because they messed up on the cover because it's got Kamala Khan, I guess, all grown up, but the cover of the issue um, has Kamala Khan but with... Um... But like Steve Rogers' costume, because she has a shield, also not the Captain Marvel, not her Captain Marvel like mm. like squishy thing. Um, so I think the the cover artist and the and the real artist didn't talk. A little. I see, you're right. You're right. They don't match. Damn it. Good call. Good cat. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. Uh, well, yeah. We'll see. Well, it could be another um, future version of that because a lot, a yeah. lot of stuff's about to happen here. But yeah. Um. So yeah, we meet everybody. We've got uh, Kamala Khan as Captain Marvel. Uh, we have Iron Groot, which is Rocket Raccoon in a suit that's made of Groot. Okay. No, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I don't know how it works. It says shut it's up. Like you bi- like it. It's, um. it's bio. <laughs> it's bio mech. Um, 
We have Jubilee, who appears to just be regular old Jubilee. And we have Jugger Duck, who is uh, Howard the Duck, who has gotten the, uh, what's that crystal? The, the Sectorac gem, the gem. gem. Yeah. yeah. He's ducking, it's ducking unstoppable. He's the yes. juggernaut, with, but Howard the Duck. It's a perfect combination. I'm I on board. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, and we get a, a watcher intro for this uh, for this issue, promising he'll never interfere. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and so the Guardians are here from the future so that they can change this new timeline that Frank has just created. Um, uh, Galactus, though, murders all of them. LOL. Uh, but Cable, except Cable. Cable is pretty badly wounded. His arm is ripped off. He does, uh, what's his, his slide thing he says? Uh, he, he teleports away. He says slide by one and teleports away, which I guess, is that is that canon with normal things where he time travels and he's going to slide I by f- one year? I feel like I've seen it, yeah. I feel like yeah, I've heard him say that a lot. I feel like that's from the cartoon. Maybe, okay. maybe. So he does a slide by one and disappears. Uh, and he immediately comes back with Pym particles, uses them to make Galactus tidy. Uh, oh, that makes put... more sense than him becoming giant. Okay, I thought he was going to be oh, giant. Well, that's cable. what I thought it was at first. Um, I think maybe it's even a little bit of both because he looks pretty big. Yeah. Um, and he puts gal- tiny little Galactus, he plucks him up, uh, and he puts him in his cannon and he, like, shoots him away, which <laughs> is kind of a fun way to deal with Galactus. Um, okay. How did that work? You know, it just did, he right? Put him you in the, gotta... He put him in an RPG and then shot him into space. And that's, yeah. Galactus shall return. Okay. <laughs> it just it just works, you know. It just it just happens. Um, and then he teleports away again and comes back with another Guardians of the Galaxy team. He's got Cloak and Shadow. He's Cloak got the dagger. thing. Oh, thank you, Cloak and Dagger. Uh, who's Cloak? What's Cloak and Shadow? Is that anything? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, thing. He's got Gambit with a mustache, uh, and he's got some other mech, maybe Iron Spider. I don't know what that is. Um, and basically. <laughs> Basically, Frank uh, keeps murdering everybody, and Cable keeps on sliding away and coming back older with a different team of just random superhero goons who keep on getting murdered. Uh, it's a fun just little b- bunch of people. My favorite, I think, was like a luchador Spider-Man in there somewhere. It's yeah, pretty good. Kills Rogue, I see. Beta Ray Bill, Hulk. There's a Hulk in there. Yeah. Uh, finally, She-Hulk punches out Frank, and he wakes up 15 minutes later with... Everybody, oh, I, that, sorry, during all the fight scene, Frank kind of tosses baby Thanos to the watcher, says, uh, don't let him see what I'm about to do. <laughs> but but baby Thanos is peeking, and he likes it. Maddie Franklin's even here. Well, not Maddie Franklin, Maddie it might Frank- be Mayday Parker. Um, it's definitely a spider girl, though. Ah, yes, yes, Mayday. Um, and so when uh, Frank wakes up 15 minutes later, baby Thanos, Thanos has murdered everybody. Uh, again, Cable is still barely alive. Uh, and he tells Frank that baby Thanos that he raises is going to be so, so, so much worse than the Thanos we already knew. Uh, and Frank kills him and his like super eye thing pops out. And then we see a future Thanos show up with a Punisher shirt and guns. And he's like, hey, dad, sorry, I'm late. And he looks like a shitty person. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny who wears a Punisher shirt for fun. That's not the Punisher. It's, it's, yeah. Hot, hot Topic it, Thanos. <laughs> it, it is. It's like right wing Hot Topic Thanos. Who, like, oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, jumping straight into issue four here. This Thanos from the future calls himself the Punisher. Uh, he's uh, kind of explaining himself to baby Thanos. Um, they go through a portal. They're like, yeah, let's go back to the future here. And they go through a portal and it's peaceful over there. There's like a nice meadow. There's like, there's butterflies in the air and baby Thanos eats one of them. Uh, Frank, Frank is just generally confused though. And Thanos says, Hey, we succeeded in the future. We've created our perfect world. Uh, it's paradise here. Uh, you know, only, only problem is he shows Frank his grave. Frank died and he's going to tell Frank how he died. But Frank's like, no, 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 I don't want to know how I died. It's okay. Then he sees. I don't know how he missed this at first. This is this whole meadow is on like a plateau, or a great above, plateau, as it were. Yes, like yes, in Zelda, yes. Breath of the Wild. Okay, all right. It's <laughs> yes, like in Zelda. All right. Yep, he's gonna um, get a little paraglider and go down to the rest of the world. Yes, that's right. Uh, and uh, Frank, <laughs> but Frank looks out across the rest of the world and just sees a ruined NYC. Uh, the Statue of Liberty is. 
No, I don't know. I don't know why they dragged the Statue of Liberty to the mainland to like dump it. They should, <laughs> should have just dumped it in the ocean, but it's there. Uh, there's a Thanos statue that's risen up instead, and uh, the the world is terrible. Uh, Frank is Frank is pissed. Uh, he's saying you're leaving all these people to die, uh, and Baby Thanos is like, well, first of all, I thought you said that was okay. Frank is like, well, hold on now, hold on. That's not. It's like in Batman Begins. He's like, I don't have to. I won't kill you, but I don't have to rescue you. And it's like, take it to the logical extreme that Thanos yeah. would be like, I didn't murder them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Let them um, live in squalor. What, what's wrong? <laughs> And they have some uh, some moral arguments for a little while about changing destiny. And uh, Thanos um, finally is like, all right, hold on. Let me show you what we're protecting in this peaceful meadow here. And in that little cottage, it's Frank Castle and his wife. And Frank is like, what? Hold on. I don't believe this. This is all fake. Uh, but like he's he's having kind of a crisis of conscience because somehow he's still ended up in service of Thanos in this world where he's kind of beholden to him. Yeah. And um, this feels this feels like a Peter Parker kind of thing more than like I don't know if Punisher ever wants like his life back. I don't know how much he ever really like espouses on that. But that's like a Peter Parker like Uncle Ben is back alive kind of thing. And like no fuck you, why you did this to me? Um, yeah. It feels more like a Peter Parker thing than Frank Castle. I, I, I Frank is so much more stoic to me than than he is characterized in this book. So some of that is, but he's also like radically different of a character at this point in his life. Yeah, he's he's been through. Uh... A lot. He's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's like, "All right, I'm done with this." He threatens to kill the baby, points a gun at his head. Uh, Thanos, I blasts him, beats him up, and he's like, "Well, it's okay. I forgive you. You can stay here and be my herald." Um, that does not happen because jumping straight into issue five, uh, this issue is mostly fight scene. A um, lot, a lot of, of punching, but Frank finally kind of unleashes and uses his. Uh, Ghost Rider powers to kill Thanos, completely vaporizes him, leaving just his skull. Uh, and then Hope Summers shows up out of nowhere. Uh, she's from the future as well. She's like, yeah, Cable was out of teleportation juice, so I uh, came back to, uh, you know, give, give him some more juice here. And Frank is, <laughs> she says, can you give this to him for me? And Frank's like, yeah, definitely, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and wait, did Cable actually die? I don't remember seeing that um, I guess he died when when yeah, his eyeball popped out. when Thanos killed him. He got blasted. Oh yeah. yes, yes, the eye popped out. Um, and then Normie Frank and his wife uh, pop out, and they're like, "Here, take this baby." Um, he's like, "Okay," and he he tells uh, Normie Frank to be a little like he he tells him something about like be be more of a man or something like that. I don't know. Um, and as he's walking away, his wife is like, "Wait a minute, Frank." Uh, but he teleports away with the baby, goes and puts the baby back, saying, yeah, I've, I've done enough damage already. Uh, Lady Death pops in, uh, thanks him for teaching Thanos how to kill. And he's like, ah, damn it. And, uh, yeah, they have a little moment of, like, is there no way to break the cycle kind of thing? And she's like, nope. And that's it. Um, and she's also like, I've chosen many people to examine yes, my, yes. like, death. And, and she implies, strongly implies, like, Punisher is also somebody she's, like, slowly nudged over time. Right, he might he might become uh, a Thanos in the future. Yeah. Mm, interesting, um, but that's it. It was a very quick read here. Um, there's a lot of fun details throughout that I think we just you know kind of tried to mention, but it is uh, I don't know if I'd, I, I maybe a kind of a thin book a little bit. Yeah, it's very uh, thin. I I, yeah. I I reread all of this in the Thanos Lives arc again um, for this, but. I guess we're at final thoughts. I like this a lot. I don't think y'all do as much. I think it's like we, we, we've ghost Rider is a hard character for me to get into. I mean, he's a flaming skull. Like they rides a motorcycle. Like, I don't know how you fuck that up, but I've never been able to really get into it. Um, and this is a, a spacey book. I like the baby stuff. I like all the arc, the issue with the different, like people traveling from the future. I think it's just goofy enough comics that it, like works for me. Um, and it's over and done quick with. I, I, I like it a lot. I think it's just – it's a lot of fun. I think it has more energy than I think – like I stopped reading comics probably around – like modern comics around like 2012, 2014. Only pick up a few things. And Donny Cates came out of nowhere for me with this arc. And I'm like, this is just fun. This is just like a lot of energy that I'm not used to from like a Marvel comic um, in this day and age. So I, I was mm. – I, I had a lot of fun with it. 
I, you know, I'll, I'll go next just because I mostly agree with you, Vince. Maybe I liked it a little bit less. I wasn't like super impressed with it, but it was fun and I enjoyed it. Probably not like a thing where I'd go seek out the whole the whole story or anything like that. But to kind of pop in and see what uh, Punisher has been up to these days here in the in the Marvel Universe. I, I had a good time with it. Uh, Chris, how about you? Um, I mean, I guess I, I didn't hate it. I just don't have like really any feelings about it in, in any way. It's just I don't care about this version of Frank Castle. I don't know that there's any version I do care about. But um, yeah, that is true. This, I'm like, I love Frank. I, I love Punisher Max run also by like Garth Ennis and Jason Aaron. So I think I'm yeah, yeah the biggest yeah, Punisher I, sucker here. Yeah, I'm not a big Punisher fan. This didn't feel like Punisher, but it also, like I said, it just didn't grab my interest, really. Um, it moved well. It had some interesting ideas, but it didn't actually, like, develop any of the ideas, I felt like. Um, so, it was. I mean, it was fine. I liked the art, um, and it was, you know, short. It read really fast. If I was reading this, you know, um, I, I can definitely, my local comic book store, I know there's somebody who, who would have pitched this to me because he pitched the DC death metal book which is a very similar vibe mm. um and it's just like yeah it's a cool idea but if you sit down and read it you're like eh, i guess hold on what is dc death metal i'm looking this up right now <laughs> there was a lot of, there was a dc dark metal or something it was, there was, it was dark, a, scott knight scott snyder greg capullo thing where it's like everybody it's it's you know it basically is a spawn style like design uh, in this alternate world where everything is crazy um and, but again similar to this book you're like oh that sounds cool and then you read it and you're like well i don't really care about any of this um so it's, it's fine but it i looks, don't it looks edgelord as hell do not put it on the list yeah <laughs> I remember but well, maybe put it on the list. Who knows? Who knows? Kia, this book was relatively edgelord. Yeah. You think so? I don't know. But for a Punisher book, I was expecting more edgelord. And really, we only kind of got most of that, I think, out of uh, out of adult Thanos. Yeah, um, we had rainbows on Valhalla. Like, it was... I, I guess. <laughs> Just It was... The, the art, yes. The art was very cute at times. Um even yeah. when there's flaming skulls around. I do I, there's almost a little bit of like there's Punisher's kind of elongated face almost gave me like I don't know. I got vibes of again very cartoony stuff. Um, I don't have actually have anything else and to I, say about yeah, it. I just liked it. And also this book came out like when Avengers between Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. And so this is a very weird book to put Thanos in. Um mm. but like I I'm very happy with it. Yeah, baby Thanos. Was this before or after baby Yoda? Before, uh, before Baby oh. Yoda, after Baby Groot. Um, so, I don't think Baby Groot was uh, the same cultural. I don't think he was, that, but I think the Baby Yoda was. No, but it's definitely like Disney realizing, well, let's just make baby versions of popular characters. <laughs> no, it's good every time. It's good it's every I'm a time. <laughs> for it, it gets me every time. Yeah, baby versions of everybody. We, Muppet it's babies? coming. It's Hell coming. Yeah, I'm all bored. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, great. And anything else to say about uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider before we jump over to Batman here? No, I'm good. I, uh, there, it's, it's run a few times. Um, it's, it's, there's more stuff on the reading guides if you want to read it. I've not read any of it. Um, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle and the guard. It, it teases like at the end of this, he joins the Guardians of the Galaxy. But since he's like the seventh character in that, he doesn't get much time. Um, so I don't think he gets to do what he wants to do. But yeah, makes sense. I. I saw he was on the cover of like a 2019 or 2018 Guardians, and I was like, how long did that last? 12 issues, of course. Right. Yeah. I, I will ask you, do we know if he's still cosmic right now, or has he gone back well, to being... I mean, uh, this is, I mean, this is an alternate version of it, so you could still have like the... Okay, okay, got it. You know, the, uh, what are they, like Jason or something? There's two different guys that are um, Ghost Rider that could probably still theoretically be around. Uh, but I don't but is Frank Robin... Castle still around, or is he still dead in the MCU? Oh, but this was like in no, the future. No, not MCU. He, he died in the future of the MCU, so there's probably still Punisher, and then this okay. was like an alternate Punisher version. So none of this happened? None of this is real? None of this is canon? Probably not. <laughs> oh. Sorry, then why did I read oh. this? Wow. None, none of this mattered. <laughs> Lost two stars. No. <laughs> no, of course. A comic book does not have to matter for it to be good. Um. But, in fact, that's a point. I in my heart. Like, oh, I didn't have to pay attention to anything else. Cool, I'm on board. Yeah, yeah. If anything, this book wanted me to to know more about uh, 
previous books than I thought I would have to when they were talking about that Thanos wins or Thanos lives or whatever. And I was like, what are you talking about? Thanos like, wins I, was pretty good. I liked it. But I have also liked this. So don't so take my yeah, recommendation yeah. with a grain of salt. <laughs> Um, all right, but let's let's jump over to Batman now here. We have been reading Nightfall, uh, specifically the first part, The Broken Bat. Uh, we are on Chapter 11, and we kind of weren't sure if we were going to stop here or if we were going to keep going after this issue. Uh, we will reveal that answer This is the Christian when we're done yeah. talking about this issue. Uh, so um, Batman 497, Batman is tired as hell he has had 10 issues of dealing with all these uh folks who have escaped out of arkham asylum he's just gotten home more tired than he's ever been and alfred is on the floor with bane standing over him bane has deduced who batman is and he's ready to kill bruce wayne and take over gotham Which uh, we, he figured him out like in the poison ivy issue that we read so like that that dude right there that one's batman i can tell yes that's right that's right <laughs> Um, I do wish there had been a little bit more like of him kind of talking about Batman's secret identity throughout this. I don't know. It felt like kind of a major point here and it would have been nice to build up to it a way. I don't know. Um, it was fine though. It was fun. Um, they talk for a little while about what Bane wants, taking the city and all that. And yeah, they start fighting. Uh, Batman, I don't know if I mentioned it, but Bane pumps himself full of venom in his mask. He says something like, your mask doesn't matter anymore, but mine still matters. This is all full of venom. Uh, if he really, he gave Batman a clue to his weak spot right there, but Batman was too tired to learn the fight. And he, uh, yeah, Batman is getting beat up. He begs Alfred to get out of there. And really this whole issue is Batman getting beat the fuck up, remembering panels from the previous 10 issues of everything he's dealt with. And he's like, yeah, that made me real tired, too. <laughs> um, and boy, I wish I was in better shape right now. Uh, doctor, who's that doctor he's been talking to? Who's been, Ken, been, Ken Solving? There, there we go. He keeps on ghosting her. She's trying to call Wayne Manor, but nobody's picking up because there's a big old fight. Um, Batman gets knocked into like a window there's, or a mirror or something. There's glass all over the place. He sees Bat He sees Robin's mask on the floor. Uh, meanwhile, Alfred has dragged himself to Tim Drake's house, uh, to get him, uh, because this is before cell phones. And he says, Alfred, we need to go help the master. He might need an ambulance. He's like, Oh shit, I'll go get my costume. Um, Batman, meanwhile, is getting pul pulverized. He's just absolutely dominated by Bane. And I, I don't know, as I was reading this, I was like, this is very believable right now, considering everything we've been reading for the past 10 issues. I'm like, yeah, Batman just like can't right now. It's done. Right. So, yeah. so, so my two parallels that I, have, so one, Chris, when you, when you talked about secret invasion a couple weeks ago, a couple of episodes ago, the, your, your discussion of you need to let your villains have some wins. Um, has, has been a point of storytelling that's really stuck with me. Um, but at the same time, like there's no there's no point in this issue where Batman ever looks like he's going to win. He never turns the tide. Mm -hmm. He's just getting the shit beaten out of him for 20 something pages. There's yep. no there's no hope. There's no like, oh, well, if I just did this, then maybe I could win. No, he's just like all loss. No victory. Mm -hmm. Right. He went within it, which I don't know if it's a good choice or a bad choice. Yeah, I mean, in pro wrestling terms, I mean, this is uh, Brock Lesnar versus, I mean, he's done this a few times, but where he just kills the other guy, and you're like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to the point where, like, this is inevitable. Batman's going to lose this fight. There's no way he's getting out of this. Yeah, yeah. well, except when Brock Lesnar does it, it's usually against somebody at full strength, which makes them look even worse. Yes. Uh, at least here, Batman is... Uh, you know, we, he's got this history where I can believe it. It doesn't make me think of Batman any less necessarily. Yeah. It's just like he caught him at a bad time. Like his plan worked. Um, right. And, that, and that's something. You're right here. Brock Lesnar is even better than Bane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, yes. You could also say this on the playground. Like, yeah, it's because Batman wasn't at full strength. Otherwise, maybe he could win. <laughs> <laughs> if he uh, used his brain, if he had time yeah. to make a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, so Batman is uh, still kind of narrating how he feels. But near the end of this, there's like one final back fist that knocks uh, Batman out. And he, he's done narrating. He's passed out. Bane lifts him above his head, breaks him bat his back in that famous panel, and then uh, drops him on the floor. And that's it. Whew. Um, and yeah. It, like I said, it's very funny if you picture him sounding like James Adomi in like my version of <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's just a funny sounding, very large man. Yes, yes. Um, you will pay, Todd. You will pay <laughs> for my pasta maker. <laughs> um, so, so as an issue here, first, let's talk about that, I think. Uh, it, it probably isn't the best issue. It's all fight. But it does, I think, work in the, on the, in the context of the whole thing. Um, I don't know. How, how did you guys feel about it? I, I think it's it, it's very weird to me because I think it feels very much like the death of Superman to me, it, which I think is probably right around the same time. This is like what, May yeah. 93? Mm. Superman 75 is probably, I think, like early 93. Um, I think it's I think it's a little like, yeah, we get it. Batman's getting beat up. So I've got I got actually honestly got a little bored during the issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's like it's a little like hammering the point home, but I guess you have to do that. And I'm like, Batman's not even gonna like fight back at them. The most interesting scene to me was Alfred talking to Tim Drake, and Des- he's like, yeah, yeah. "My dad, but like, my dad's gonna find out about this." Which honestly would have been a cool scene. That that's when uh, Tim Drake's dad finds out. That'd be mm, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as an issue, like, and this is getting to our final thoughts. We're like, because we we're like, oh, we're definitely gonna end at issue eleven with the breaking of the bat, and then we'll go find another long read. I'm like, this did a good job. Of like, well, what happens next? Like, I want to know, like, so I'm like, are we just going to see Bruce Wayne, like recovering or what's going to happen? Like, I want to read more. Like, it was very successful at launching the next story for me and getting me to buy the next issue. Mm -hmm. And again, this is, you know, if you're doing a five act structure, this is a very good act three ending where, you know, if you're like, this is your intermission, the audience is like, damn, like now what? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, so I think to that end, we've kind of given away that we want to keep reading this, um, especially now. We've seen so much of Bane throughout. Well, we really haven't seen so much of Bane throughout these last 10 issues. We had that chapter zero that They're was really great with him. They're really holding him back. They're doing a very yeah. good. <laughs> but now they finally, he's finally the center of focus here. Um, he's about to take over Gotham. And so we kind of want to keep reading to see what's going to happen. So we're going to keep going with this until at least through the end of the Broken Bat uh section so, of nightfall which is through chapter 19 i think there's 19 ch- explicit chapters on dc universe although there's like a couple issues that don't have like numbers on them like a couple issues of shadow of the bat the god of fear that i think we'll talk later i don't know if we'll skip there's we'll like talk three issues later we'll see yeah we'll see. maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll read those but for right now we're we're at least committing to the rest of the chapters here through chapter 19. Yeah, Batman 500 is chapter 19. Okay, great. So we're well, going it, through it, there. It ends with Detective 666 and then Batman 500. They really line that up really well. Yeah, hell That's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, next time then, chapter 12 is Detective Comics 664, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're going to read that as and continue the Nightfall long read here. Uh, but what is uh, anything else to say about uh, this this stuff here right now? I, I think Vince kind of said it. We're we're curious to see what happens next. But uh, yeah, I, I like the beginning of it. I really like that. Like Batman's had this thing. He's back at his home. He doesn't have his mask on for most of it, um, or the most of the beginning. And he's like, and now I have to fight my my final big foe. Like it's very, very good structure. Um, mm-hmm. Like it's it's very good. Um, gives me shades of Batman Begins because I think like his Wayne Manor got destroyed in that. I wonder how much they were um, cribbing from this, um, like destroying Wayne Manor in, mm. in uh, the end of Batman Begins. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. Um, it, j- it just feels like this is your safe place, and now this is place. Now even this place is not safe. Um, is a is a good like arc trope kind of thing that I really like. Oh, we'll see if they yeah. do. I do. I do love you really get a sense and there's maybe the flashbacks are excessive, but like Batman, like he just needs like to take a day and have like a 12 hours of sleep. (laughs) Like he looks so haggard. He's so tired. You just feel bad for Batman who I almost never feel bad for. Like Mm -hmm. I find Batman to be pretty boring, but I'm just like, poor, poor Batman. (laughs) I, and I'm wondering if like him not having his mask on helps in that regard. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I like that he's always drawn with the, like, uh, crappy, you know, like, two-day stubble. Yeah, it really or He doesn't quite have a beard, but he just, like, he, he it doesn't look good. He just needs to make a decision. Like, are you growing a beard or are you shaving? Who did the art for this? Is it Aparo? Uh, oh, I didn't write it I down. I think actually. it's Aparo. He's good. Yeah, Jim Aparo. All the artists have been really good on this. Yeah. Yes, it's Aparo. Um... 
my my prediction is that Batman takes a twelve hour spa day at the <laughs> bottom of a giant well and then has to climb out. Yep. Yep. Perfect. I think that's how it goes. Um. All right, so we'll see what happens next time, Detective 664. And then our main read next time, we are going back to Aliens versus Predator. Uh, we read this a while back. Three years uh, ago the, now. Yeah, a Dark, Horse, a Dark Horse miniseries that we really enjoyed by Randy Stradley. Um, and Dark Horse had a few other kind of one-shots and stuff they did, but we're going to read the next five-issue mini they did, uh, which is Aliens versus Predator War. Uh, in 1995, uh, the return of uh, our protagonist, Machiko, who uh, I believe when we last saw her, she was uh, hooking up with the Predators. Is that right? Yeah, she just had joined the the, the Predators as like a, a human in the Predator clan. Um, yeah. Which is honestly like, I'm like teasing the head, like exactly what I kind of really wanted from Alien vs. Predator. It's a human hanging out with a bunch of Predators who don't speak English, and then they go and fight aliens, which is what the movie should have been. Um, <laughs> she's like fun. your point of view character into the predators yeah. and they fight aliens. It's that's great. Yeah. Uh, the last episode, the last one we did was episode one thirty three back in July, 2020 for alien versus predator. Wow. One. Yeah. So, wow. wow. Okay. Old times. Um, very good. Well, uh, we'll, we'll be doing that next time. What else is going on with us? Uh, Chris, what is going on with the, your stupid minds podcast? Well, as we mentioned last episode, and it's still coming up uh, in about a month, uh, if you listen to this episode when it's released, uh, Your Stupid Minds will have a uh, a podcast uh, at Comics Palooza in Houston, Texas, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we'll be covering Catwoman, yes. so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, in the meantime, we just recently did a comic book movie. We did Dark Phoenix, the last Fox X Men movie, not counting New Mutants, which is not an X Men movie. Which I also covered. Which yeah, we've already covered. But you said uh, Minions. The new, new mutants. The new min. The new Minions. Oh. Yeah, with, uh, <laughs> I didn't know the new Minions was an X Men movie. But. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we talk about Dark Phoenix, which uh, believe it or not is bad. It has a bunch of aliens who are never given names. Um, it has a cast of B list uh, young hot actors like. The kid from Ready Player One and Sansa Stark and uh, Cody Smith McVie from Power of the Dog and Paranorman and all that stuff and does nothing with them. So I, that... I, I I saw this movie in theaters and I was looking at the cast list. Jessica Chastain is in that movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's the head alien that I think only she has a name. <laughs> So kind of like kind of like uh, Secret Invasion. I saw this movie. I just remember. I'm, I'm excited to listen to the episode. I just remember it feeling very cheap. Um, yeah. For, and it was Zach Penn di- writing and directing. And I think he also wrote uh, the first Dark Phoenix time they tried to do a movie. He wrote Last Stand and Dark Phoenix. So yes, and he, as we talked about in the episode, uh, had to take over directing it for some reason. Oh, did uh, Brian Singer get COVID? Is that what is that what people do when they when they have to get kicked off of movies? They just get um, no, this was what 2017 or 18. Yeah, so I don't he, think COVID existed yet. <laughs> he did some other but, things that uh, we'll allegedly say with young boys. Yes, but um, yes. Any, anyway, so yeah, that's uh, your stupid minds. Uh, we've got uh, over 200 some episodes. Dark Phoenix, a lot of fun to talk about. Not a lot of fun to watch, uh, but it's I'm on excited. Disney Plus. I'm excited for that. Uh, very good. Vince, what you got going on? I've got nothing really going on. Uh, my Games My Mom Found episode is still pending. Um, I think it's supposed to come out in May. I said last time I was on Super Switch Heads a couple weeks ago, talking about the death of E3, and other than that, I've just been playing video games, getting excited for Tears of the Kingdom. And actually, I think this is also my last episode before my birthday, so woohoo! Thank you for doing Woo! Cosmic Ghost Rider for me. That was my birthday episode I picked, so thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday! I didn't know that's why you picked it. I'm, uh, I think I'm going to change it to I'm going to pick a comic that y'all probably won't like for my birthday going forward. That's probably what okay. I'm going to start doing. Well, hold on. The next episode is my birthday. We oh. then we picked another one that you wanted to do. Yep. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get right, ahead of that. Fine. All right. I, I wasn't thinking. That's all right. That's why Chris is always picking Swamp Thing for his birthday. Oh, oh yeah. that makes sense. We should do that that again soon. Put that on the list. Um. <laughs> But uh, no, what, uh, what do I have going on? My laptop bricked on me. I'm trying to recover the data. None of my own methods have worked so far, so I'm going to have to take it somewhere. That's what I've been oh. dealing with. It's fine. Uh, uh, fans of the show who visit the website, uh, allmyfriendsareRightHere.com, 
uh, will see the images that we put up every week. And I don't have access to those templates anymore. So it's going to look real funky. So everybody, make sure you check out the website and leave a comment on how well or poorly I did with the image. I'm for the sure episode. it'll be great. I hope it's the shark <laughs> picture. Uh, it probably will be. I can't imagine I would choose anything else. All right. Cool. All right. Um, well, folks, uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, Vince, I love you. Love you too, buddy. Chris, I love you. Uh, by loving me, you've doomed the universe. Oh, Jesus. no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know what? This is a Chris, worse universe now that you love him. If you didn't love him, we'd Chris, be better off. I won't, I won't stop. I won't ever stop loving you, <laughs> even if it means the universe is doomed. Uh, listeners, I love you as well. I'm, po- I'm confident I will not doom the universe, uh, and you're allowed to love me back. Uh, and thanks for listening. We'll see you all next time. Have a good night. Bye.